appreciation weekend for it is well deserved and we give him all glory and honor because he's worthy we're just gonna praise him for just a little bit okay come on and bless the lord with me 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 say hallelujah say hallelujah hallelujah we say hallelujah hallelujah oh come on and clap your hands with me 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 say hi Clap your hands if you love Jesus. 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 Clap, 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 He is mighty. 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 He is migh
God. He's a great God. Yes, Lord. We're ready to give God all the glory that he deserves, all the honor that he deserves, all the praise that he deserves. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn this over now to Pastor Darwin. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's clap our hands. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, it don't take a bunch of us. Come on, hallelujah. That's it. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him glory. Come on, with the fruit of your lips. We are from the sacrifice of praise. We are from the sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah. And he's been so good to me. It's not a sacrifice tonight. I just feel like it. I don't know who's with me, but I just feel like it. I need about two of you that just feel like giving him the glory. Come on, let's open up our mouths and do it. Let's clap our hands and do it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Let us lift his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. And we magnify him. Hallelujah. In this place, we reverence him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. And we honor you for who you are. Thank you, Lord God. We honor you because you are God. You're God all by yourself. And we thank you. Father God, we thank you for blessing us. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for bringing us to this place one more time. Lord God, to give your name praise, glory, and honor. Oh God, we thank you and we count it as a privilege, Lord God, to worship you tonight. Oh, God, for all the great things you have done for us, Lord God, we thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way and closing us in our right mind, Lord God, giving us the activity of our limbs. We take nothing for granted tonight, Lord God, and we thank you. We thank you for this honoree, Lord God, the set man of this house, Lord God, the man of God. And thank you, Jesus, for all the things you've given him, Lord God, the words you've given him, the inspiration you've given him, the anointing that you've given him. We celebrate him tonight, Lord God. We thank you for those on the sound of my voice, Lord God. Hallelujah. We will be uplifted and encouraged by this celebration tonight. Oh, God, we thank you for those that are on the way here, Lord God. Give them traveling grace, Lord God. And those, Lord God, even here, Lord God, let us open up our hearts to worship you, Lord God, like never before, Lord God. In Jesus' name, touch the speaker tonight, Lord God. Bless her, Lord God, and anoint her even the more, Lord God. We thank you for fresh rhema tonight. In Jesus' name, touch the musicians, the singers. Oh God, we just thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why don't we clap our hands and give God some more praises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to have our scripture. Amen. Followed by the welcome. Sister, is Bel Sister Belinda Williams has come with the scripture, and I welcome with Sister Brooklyn Barnes. Amen. Our scripture will be coming from Psalms 136. And it reads, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. I have read Psalms 136, 1 through 4. Good evening. Good evening. We, the team members of TDC Ministries International, would like to welcome you to, prophets, to the Prophet's Appreciation, honoring a faithful, dedicated, and loving servant of God. This weekend, we want you to feel free to worship and praise, and it's our hope that you came expecting a miracle. But without further ado, please stand as the honoree enters Prophet Dr. Terrence Kruger.
Praise the Lord. Oh, come on. Can we clap our hands and celebrate him? Hallelujah. Oh, thank God. Amen. This is not a funeral. Uh, it's a celebration of life. But we're here and alive to see him, and he's able to see us and hear us. Can we one more time give God some praises? This great man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We prepare for praise and worship. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to your name. Come on, let's clap our hands and give God some praises. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's worship him. Say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy.
great God. He's a 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 great Praise and worship. Praise and worship by Pastor Derek McAllister. Well, Derek Alexander. I'm so Amen. Clap those hands, all ye people. Come on. Put those hands together. God is worthy to be praised. Come on, magnify him, church, all around the sanctuary. Lift that voice up and exalt his name. There's no God like Jehovah, and we reverence him, and we magnify him because he's good. Come on, you just sung how good God is. I say you just sung how good God is. Now begin to show him how good he is. Come on. Open up your mouth and give him glory. Oh, la, la, ba, sandia. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Give him praise, I am. Lift that voice up in this sanctuary. We reverence him because he's kind. We praise him because he's good. He's an awesome wonder. Masterful redeemer. Come on, come on. Talk to him for the next few seconds. Let's prepare our hearts for praise and worship. Lord, your word. Oh, yes, Lord. Lord, your word. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we give God praise. Let's give God praise for the honoree tonight. Amen. And the person of Prophet Terrence. Come on, clap your hands for him. Amen. To my brother, Pastor Darwin Days, clap your hands for him. And to our speaker, I'm so glad to see this. Lady Curtis, clap your hands for her. Amen. God is good. We're going to praise God for a few seconds. Y'all ready? Let's do name of Jesus. Let's do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you clap your hands like this, everybody? God bless you, Bishop Walker. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Come on, give that name praise right now. Come on, come on. I can't hear you, church. Raise that praise up. Come on, raise it. Oh! Simple song, just call and response. The name of Jesus lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus lifted high in this place. That's all you say. Come on. The name of Jesus lifted high, hey, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus lifted high. In this. One more time, come on. The name of Jesus. I hear your church. Come on. Yep. The name of Jesus. In this place. Now do me a favor. Get that name praise right now. Go, go. Hey. Shanda never hold of Sunday. Come on, give that name praise. Oh Jesus. Oh. The name of Jesus lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus lifted high in this place. 
the name of Jesus. Come on, church. Lift in her. Lift in her. The name of Jesus. In this place. One more time. Raise that up again. The name of Jesus. Oh, no, 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 no. musicians in this place raise that praise up everybody one more round go go Woo. come on raise that praise up in this sanctuary let God like Jehovah you're holy you're awesome hey. I love this part sons and daughters prophesy 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 sons and daughters prophesy in this place, sons and daughters. That's right, come on. Prophesy, prophesy, sons and daughters. Woo. In this place, don't know about Sunday. I feel I'm coming. Son, sons, and prophesy, prophesy, sons and daughters. Let's go, y'all. In this place, raise that praise on one more time. Go, go, go. Come on, put your hands on it. When you clap your hands, it's a sign of victory. I need Levites to come to the forefront and put your hands on it. Come on. Hey, release your glory on us now. On us now. On us now. Release your glory on us now. Release your glory. All about Sunday. We need your glory. Send it down. Shower down. In this place. One more time. Release your glory. Oh. We're desperate for it. We're hungry for it. Release your glory. In this place, one more time. Come on, say it again. Release your glory. We need it. Desperate for it. Gotta have it. Release your glory. Hey. I feel that one more time. I feel the clouds opening. Release your glory. Send it down. Give it to us. We need it. We're hungry. We're thirsty. In this place, now send that praise up for the glory. Go, go, go. Hey, go, hey, hey. Go, go, go. Send that glory. Go, go, go. Send that praise up to the glory. Come now. Come on, church. Release that praise. Release that praise. Release that praise. Release that praise. Send down your glory. Release that praise. Send down your glory as we release that praise. Come on. Send down your glory as we release your praise. We send you praise. You can send down glory. We send you praise. You can send down glory. We send you praise. You can send down glory. We send you praise. You can send down glory. Send down your 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 glory. Oh, oh, oh. We worship, adore you. We declare nobody like you. We worship, adore you. We declare nobody like you. Come on, church. We worship, adore you. We declare nobody like you. We worship, oh, adore you. We declare nobody like you. Come on, say it again. We worship, adore you. We declare nobody like you. We worship, adore you. We declare. Nobody. Come on, lift it up. Hey, we worship. I tell you, we declare nobody like you. We worship. I tell you, we declare nobody like you. Hey, we worship. 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 
a fire, a throne of a Sunday, a fire, a fire, not just from Christmas, Resurrection Sunday, but 365 days a year, 24 7, 24 hours. Come on, we are for you, we are for you, you deserve it all, you deserve it all, you deserve it all, you deserve it all. Say, we declare, 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 there's nobody like you. No, 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 there's nobody like you. No, 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 there's nobody like you. Nobody like you. Searched all over, still can't find. Look high and lower, but still can't find. With the service of service, we're fine with the revival. Look for somebody, but couldn't find nobody. You're holy, you're awesome, you're amazing. You are Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and you're the end, my first and my last, my present help in the time of trouble. You're my battle axe in the battle, lily in the valley, bright and morning star. Everything that I need, everything that I want, everything that I need, everything that I want, everything that I need, everything that I want. With that praise of yo, 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 yo. I say lift it up, church. I say lift it up until you force them to come now. Lift that praise up to him. Come on, church. Lift it. No, 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 so to me. Well, I feel prophetic winds coming. I say lift it. One of my souls here. Come on, lift that praise up. Hey, lift that praise up until your rope catch on fire. Lift that praise up. Lift that praise up. When you praise him, he'll come down to you. We exalt you. We magnify you. We glorify you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no, 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 Sunday. Oh, Jesus. Come on, lift it up, church. Oh, no, 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 so up, so up. Na 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 no la basade I feel the rivers flowing come on just jump in right now right there right there right there Na 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 no sande o la basea Oh jeez Oh god Come on come on it's your moment there's a miracle in this moment right here. The more you give him props, the quicker he'll show up. Come on, put that man on display. We worship. Adore you. Declare. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Searched all over. Still can't find. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Come on, worship God right here. Just merge right into that place of worship. Expose your private time into the public right now. Worship him. Come on, worship him, church. This is, I know we didn't rehearse this, but let me, I feel this in my spirit. All oh, praises. Be to the King of Kings and the 
I wish I had a worshiper right now that knew who that king is. Oh, kings and the Lord, our God, he is wonderful. All praises be to the king. Oh, kings forces with the angels and cry hallelujah 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 you are wonderful hallelujah 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 Shut up.
Come on, trust the Lord, Lord Jehovah. We praise you. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Can you lift that loss on the Jesus? That worship up church. We give you tell them we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be. Let that thing up one more time. We give you, we give. One more round, musicians. Let's turn that worship up again. Everybody, come on, tell them. We give you. We worship. Oh, no, 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 Sandia. Oh, Lord. You worthy to be praised. Come on, say that. We give you. We give you. Come on, let's go. We worship. We worship you. You are. Now do me a favor. For the next 30 seconds, begin to worship that king. Go worship him right now. Go. Hey, I'm a Sunday. Come on, worship that king in the room. It's all that savior. Lift that God up. You want it. You are Come on, worship him first. One more round. Come on. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We worship you, our Lord. You are Sing that, come on. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to. Come on. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy. Give that God the glory right now. Go, come on. I'm about to take my seat, but before I sit down, can we give that God the glory right now? Come on! Oh, Jesus! Oh, no, 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 me Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! I say, give that God the glory from the depths of your soul, out of your belly. Let your worship flow. Oh, Jesus. Come on, church. Oh, Jesus. Oh, 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 Shania. I say, give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give 
them coming. Give them coming. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. We give him glory so he can see this glory. Glory, glory, glory. Come on, church. Tap into that realm. Glory, glory, glory. Tap into that place. Glory, glory, glory. From the pulpit to the back door. Send me your glory. Come on, Tyler. Let's stir up this river. Let's stir up this river. Hey, Shanda Bakadio. We tell him the Now go. Let's stir up this river. Glory. Come on, Zion. Glory. We need it. Desperate for it. Gotta have it. Takes a bomb without it. Glory. Come on, Zion. Glory. I need some hungry folk in here. Oh, this still praise and worship. It's your part this time. I need some hungry folk. Some thirsty believers. Glory! Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm giving a sit down, but I need you to stir up a little more. Oh, Jesus. I will lose my mind if I don't feel it. I will go crazy if I can't sense it. I will lose my baby life if I can't have it. I say, tell him I need his glory over my life, over my family, over my ministry. I need somebody to stop giving you glory. Oh, son. I said, we need your glory. Come on, Pastor Don, because I feel something shifting. Oh, shut up. Glory. Praise him. Come on, clap your hands. I didn't need that gap right there. I need you to open your mouth and praise him. Come on. Come on, come on. That's it. And we're moving. We're moving. Hallelujah. I wonder, I want to know, because when the glory comes, he doesn't come empty-handed. Uh, Bishop Walker, he doesn't come empty-handed. And I have a question for you tonight. How would you act if you knew that God had what you need tonight in this room? I need to hear you. I say, how? How would you? What would you do? I say, what would you do? Hey! Damn. Y'all take, take your seat tonight. Hallelujah. It's a stirring. There's a stirring in the water. I say there's a stirring in the water tonight. Hallelujah. I feel it. Y'all take your seat. We're going to have, I, I feel it. Hallelujah. A ministry of dance. Hallelujah. By Pastor Lamar McLean. Thank you, Lord. He's not here. But Derek, I need you to do me a favor because I don't got a little up in age. I know you're trying to catch your breath. But since can we replace a foot praise with this dance that's not here. Can y'all give us 30 seconds? Derek gonna dance for me, because he's a dancer. Uh, can, can we, y'all ain't got to build up to it. Can you just think of one thing? Can we replay? One, two, three, come! Hey. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Yes! You ain't need nothing to build up to it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh, yeah! Yay! Is the man of God here? I see we got 15 more seconds. Come on! Yeah. 
That's it. My testimony is he turned my mourning into dancing. Oh, yeah. I went through five years of mourning. And then he turned it into dancing. And I'm grateful. Hallelujah. Y'all take your seat. Yeah. Thank you, Derek. I needed that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, hallelujah, a dance saved my life. Hallelujah. I had to dance one time, hallelujah, when I didn't even feel like it. We moving, hallelujah, Bishop Walker was getting ready to come, hallelujah, but I had to dance, hallelujah, in the devil's face because I had to remind the devil that this dance is indicative that I'm still here. I need about two of you in here that know that you're still here. I need you to look over at your neighbor and say, I'm still here, and it's by the grace of God. After all the rumors, after all the lies, I'm going to go down this road, and some of it was true. But God saved me anyway, and I still got to pray. I need about three of you here today. I still got to pray. Oh. Whew. It's churchy in here tonight. Shonda, it's churchy in here tonight. Prophet, it's churchy in here tonight. Hallelujah. We don't want to just celebrate you, hallelujah, because it's time to celebrate. But we want to celebrate the God in you. Hallelujah, because he could have chose somebody else. The Bible says if it could be possible, then these rocks would cry out. But I don't want no rocks crying out for me. A rock ain't never been delivered. A rock ain't never been set free. If you want to open your mouth with me one more time, I ain't going to bother y'all. But one more time, come on, out through the rock. He stirred it up. All you have to do is just come in here and do praise and worship. I got to go to Sunday school in the morning, but no, hallelujah, that's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. High five your neighbor as you take your seat, hallelujah. We're getting ready for special words. Hallelujah, special words by Brother Shamar Barnes. Come on, clap your hands. After that, we have musical guest Bishop Lionel Walker. Come on, clap your hands as they come. Hello. Give it honor to God, Pastor, the Prophet, <laughs> and everybody in their respectful places. I believe in this season, and before I say what I have to say, y'all, uh, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, Pastor, for forgiveness. I believe in this season, God is calling for time. Our Father has blessed us with one of the greatest things that we will ever experience in this life. And that great thing, that awesome thing, that thing that can't be explained and some just don't understand. I believe that everybody that's under the sound of my voice will get a new thing, a new revelation, a consuming fire burning within, something that can't be quenched, something that will burn ablaze for the rest of our days. Christ will reign despite our pain. Christ will gain a vessel, and not just a vessel, a willing vessel, willing to do the will of God in the name of Jesus. Have you ever considered how valuable time is? Time is something you can give, and it's also something you can never get back. So the very thing that our Father has given us is the very thing he so desired back from us, time. I don't know anybody whose time is more valuable than God's time. So I believe he is asking, may I help? sometime prophet i thank you i thank you for giving me your time i thank you for giving me your, your love i thank you for giving me your understanding i thank you for giving me, me your patience prophet i thank you for your prayers your continual prayers i thank you for showing me the very attributes of Christ. Growing up, I didn't have a father. I didn't have someone I could look up to. But God has given me a spiritual father. And I know that uh, I make a lot of mistakes, man. But I know and believe that I will become the man that God called me to be. And the man that you see me to be. So on behalf of TDC Ministries, we tell you thank you 
for everything for everything that you poured into us everything that you sacrificed for us it went in vain even if nothing is shifted the way that you see it to be shifted it will but I just want to let you know we appreciate you and I want to thank your mother for birthing you into this world because without her you wouldn't be here so I thank God for that because we love this man this is a, a very powerful man of God and we're so thankful to have you as our leader thank you Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give God praise one more time. Amen. We honor the Lord. Amen to the honoree. Amen. Prophet Dr. Terrence Kruger. I remember before, some years ago, uh, he used to, we used to kind of be close. I don't know what happened. Amen. <laughs> he would just share with me. Amen. I don't know if he remember, and I was thinking on the way here, uh, he used to send me messages. <laughs> Say, Doc, I'm going to come to your church. I'm going to come to your church and be your praise and worship leader. I said, all right, I'm, I'm waiting on that day, and I'm still waiting. <laughs> Amen. But we honor him today. Amen. Tonight, let's give God praise for him one more time. Amen. To our presider. Amen. Pastor Days. Amen. To prophet alexander i don't i don't think i need to say nothing amen after all of that and i, I could just introduce prophetess amen shonda curtis <laughs> amen but i'm gonna take you back to a uh, little church i passed in this little place and little archer amen did you come to have some church a little church can we have some just some baptist church pastor days i passed a baptist church now so we don't we don't do a whole lot of shouting, but we do something like this. Give me a give me something right there. Uh huh. Give me church. Uh, uh. There we go. Right there. Put your hands together. Let me see. If you don't mind, get up on your feet. Bring the volume up. Come on. Let me see you clap your hands. Simple song, let's say, I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise his name. Love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Oh, thank you. His whole, let's say, I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise Him. Oh, His holy name. Tell me why? Cause He's my rock, my rock. Come on, let's have church. He's a wheel in the middle. Oh, He won't ever, never. He's just a jewel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I love, I love the praises, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, I love, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, I love, oh, his holy name, let's do it again, I love to praise him, oh, yes, I love to praise him, oh, holy name oh he's my rock my rock my rock my soul is you he's the wheel in the middle in the middle of the wheel he won't never 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 let me down he's just a jewel that I, come on and say hallelujah 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 the highest, highest praise we give to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let 
me for your clap. Yes, sir. I want to take you back. I don't know what you come to do. Look at somebody and tell them, say, I don't know what you come to do. Say it again. I don't know what you come to do. Say, I don't know what you come to do. Yes. Say, I came to clap my hand. I came to clap my hand. I came to clap my hand. I came to clap my hands. I came to stomp my feet. I came to stomp my feet. Did anybody come to stomp your feet? I did it stomp your feet. I came to shout for joy. 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 I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sing, I came to clap my hand. Put your hands together. Come on, give him a praise with your hands. I came to clap my hand. I came to do my dance. I came to do my dance. I came to do my dance. I came to lift him up. 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 I came to shout for joy. 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 Now somebody give him praise. Come on and give him praise. Hey, come on and give him praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, sir. Give him a best praise right now. Give him your best praise. Yeah. I love to praise him because he's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. And we give him glory. And we give you honor. Hallelujah. Great are you, O oh God and all the earth. Oh, you don't know my story All the things that I've been through You can't feel my pain What I had to go through to get here you'll never understand my brains don't try to figure it out my worship my worship is for real do I have a witness in here so you don't know you don't know my soul and all, all the things that I've been through. You can't feel, you can't feel my pain. What I had to go through to get here, you'll never understand my praise. So don't try to figure it out. My worship is real hey, Because my worship hey, My worship is real Listen, I 
I've been through too much not to worship him. Do I have a witness in the room tonight? I've been through too much not to worship him. If you've been through something, say, I've been through too much to worship through to much not to worship one more time and say I've been through to much not to worship him lift those hands lift those hands and say hallelujah hallelujah my worship is for real Sing hallelujah, say hallelujah, my worship is for real. Say, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, my worship is for real, yes. Say, Lord, I love you, say, Lord, I love you, my worship is for real. My worship is for real. No matter what I've gone through, no matter what I've experienced in life, nothing can separate me from the love of God. My worship is for real. My glory is for real. My thank you, Jesus, is for real. My Lord, I love you. It's for real. It is for real. It is for real. I've been through too much now to worship him. Dr. Kruger, I know you can testify out of all that you've experienced over the course of your ministry lie on you and talk about you and scandalize you say that you'll never amount to anything but what they fail to understand is that when your heart is real towards God hallelujah God will always prove them wrong I wish I had a witness in here in spite of what you're facing and in spite of what you're going through, every trial, every situation, we count it all joy because our worship he is for real. I've been through too much now to worship him. Can you just lift those hands one more time and declare it? I've been through too much now. Glory, hallelujah. Pastor Dar, when I heard you say that it was a dance that saved your life, but how many of you know it was a broken heart that saved mine? Broken heart, a lot of people talking, and Pastor Lana, <laughs> just like you said, a lot of people was talking, and a lot of people was running their mouths, but it was a broken heart that saved my life. Isn't it funny how a broken heart can pull a yes out of you. When I've been telling God no all my life, I'll sing in the choir, I'll, I'll usher, I'll do the children's church, I'll do whatever you have me to do. And I won't preach. I won't, I won't declare your word, but I'll do everything else. And I said, God, if you get, grant me a husband, and I'm starting with this because of, of, of I've heard you say it and I heard him say it and I want to just put this in the atmosphere really quickly that God in this season of not just my life but everybody's life he's really concerned about our recovery he's uh, he's really concerned about our recovery 
from the gossip, from the lies, from the divorce, from the things that hurt us, the things that beat us. He's concerned about our recovery. And I just want to share a word with you on tonight. And I hope that tonight the word blesses you. There's no need for me to do a whole bunch of exhortation and all of that because we've been in the presence of the Lord and the only thing lacking now is his word. Amen. And I just want to share a few moments with you of uh, the scriptures. Amen. I want to come from uh, scripture. I just want to say, first of all, I do thank God for our honoree on tonight. Prophet Kruger, amen. He's a good friend of mine, very good friend of mine. I met him through my son years ago, and he's supposed to have been my son's friend, but then me and him kind of linked up one time and went to dinner and started talking about the prophetic. We started talking about all this stuff, and see, I've been talking about all that stuff and all, all that, and I just wasn't walking in it, but we were... <laughs> I was walking along <laughs> with it, amen, all of those years. And we would share um, the word of the Lord very often. And we became good friends, started singing and doing ministry together, various places. And I just honor you tonight and thank you for your consistency, amen, your consistency in my life, amen. And so I want to come from the book of Acts, very familiar passage of scripture, I'm sure, to all of you pastors preached it before Acts 4 we're going to start at the 23rd verse and we're going to go all the way down to the 31st verse it says as soon I'm reading from the message Bible that gets a little ghetto sometimes and so I like kind of like it you know so I'm going to read from the message uh, version it says as soon as Peter and John were let go they went to their friends and told them what the high priest and religious leaders had said. Hearing the report, they lifted their voices in a wonderful harmony in prayer. Strong God, you made heaven and earth and sea and everything in them. By the Holy Spirit, you spoke through the mouth of your servant and our father, David. Why the big noise nations? Why the mean plots people? Earth leaders push for position. Potentants meet for summit talks. A God, the God deniers, the Messiah defiers. For in fact, they did meet Herod and Pontius Pilate with nations and peoples. Even Israel itself met in this very city to plot against your holy son, Jesus, the one you made Messiah, to carry out the plans you long ago set in motion. And now they're at it again. Take care of their threats and give your servants fearless confidence in preaching your message as you stretch out your hand to us in healings and miracles and wonders done in the name of your holy servant Jesus. Last and final verse, verse 31 says, while they were praying, the place where they were meeting trembled and shook. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak God's word with fearless confidence. If you would give just a moment, I want to share with you from a suggestion, a little thought that says, I'm about to see what I've been saying. I'm about to see what I've been saying. Father, I thank you for your word, Father, for you are your word. I thank you, Father, for you come tonight to bring life. And Father, we thank you for these people that have gathered themselves together here tonight. God, just to hear what you have to say, Father, allow your word to accomplish what you've sent it to. And Father, we ask only one thing of you, and that's that you, God, be God through us, in us, and for us. Feed us, and those of us that hunger and thirst, fill us. And Lord, we love you, we give you glory, honor, praise, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may take your seats. I won't be before you long, I promise. I won't be before you long. But as I re recently and as I just stated, discovered in this, this season of my life, 
God is really concerned about his people's recovery. Life, as I said, is beat us. But one thing I love about God, when we, when we are trampled over, when we are beaten, he builds us up better than what we were when we were torn down. The resilience that he gives us after. And I don't know why I had a whole message that said on short notice and I was going to get up here and I was going to say some things, but the spirit of the Lord said, preach this message tonight because somebody needs to hear it. Somebody in here, you're going through a season of recovery. You're going through a season of recovery, and it's detrimental to the next phase of your ministry, the next phase of your walk with God. But deconstruction, the tearing down, is only, listen to me, I want you to write this down, note this in your memory, it's only as detrimental as the recovery. Meaning, if you recover, the deconstruction, the tearing down, only becomes a, a memory, a stepping stone. And God is saying in this moment and in this, this atmosphere tonight, I want to deal with those of you that are walking through seasons of recovery. And I know I'm not the only one in here that had been through something. I'm not the only one in here that's still dealing with something. But tonight I'm praying God deals with the triggers. <laughs> so that when we, when, we, when we hear things and when we see things that we're not triggered and abort the recovery process and that we continue to be healed and to walk in full deliverance. Now, to my scripture. History has it, Peter and John in this passage of scripture. And you know all these seasoned preachers here, I was just sitting there like, Lord, I, you know, I'm just, um, I've been in church all my life, and I'm, you know, I not heard a lot of pre people preach, and I not, now I'm on the other side of this thing. You got all, you got all these good, uh, 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 pro what they call it, procrastinators of the gospel, and so uh, I, I just want to be careful with this, with this word, but I, I was reading this scripture, and I began to go back in the history of of, of Peter and John, and the scriptures say that Peter and John, Andrew and James were working together. They were entrepreneurs. They were fishermen, and they were fishing, and one day, uh, Peter's brother, uh, he went to, 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 to a service, and I'm going to say a service, and he heard John the Baptist declaring the word of the Lord, and re he received Christ. Went back so excited about his salvation, he went back and grabbed his brother Peter and brought Peter. And Peter heard the word of the Lord, and he began to follow Christ through his brother. And I said that to say this. There are three things that I want to discuss on tonight. And if you would, I want to just put this disclaimer out there. Before being a preacher or anything else, I'm anointed to teach the gospel. I am a teacher. So you may not get a hoop, but you're going to get a word. Amen. Amen. So, so the, 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 the scripture said that Peter received Christ and began to follow Christ because of his brothers. Yes. And so there's three things I want to discuss with you. When the Bible goes all the way down, it talks about how Peter and John linked up. And they began to do ministry together. Talks about the history of them going through things together. They went through a rebirthing together. They started a ministry together. They did all of these things together. And one of, one of the three things that I want to talk about on tonight, get your pen and your paper, because I'm a teacher. I'm a real teacher. I mean, when I was here, I was a teacher. And I taught at the elementary school, so I love teaching. But one of the things I love about Peter and John and I love about Prophet Kruger. And when you get on his Zooms, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. He's, he's a great teacher of the gospel as well. And Peter and John, amen, doing ministry together. But three things that stood out to me about Peter and John. One was the call of God on their lives. Second was the partnership between the two. And thirdly, 
was the posture. It was the posture that they remained in. First thing, the call of God on your life, you have to understand that the call of God on your life, God knew before he, uh, uh, in, in John it says, before I knew thee, I formed thee, before I formed thee, I knew thee. And I called you to be a prophet. So God knew everything that we would go through. He would know when we would need to go through a healing process. He knew what it would take to get a final yes out of us. A final yes. Because sometimes we'll say yes, but we don't make a move. We don't bust no move, but we'll say yes. And so to get that final yes, that sincere yes, that pull that yes out of us that says, I ain't going back this time. And so you have to understand that the call of God on your life, he calls us not because we are put together, but to get us together. He calls us, (laughs) yes, and then what I love about God, God put in each one of us a mechanism. And he said, if you lift me up, I'll do the drawing. So we wonder what, there's a mechanism in each one of us. And until that mechanism is turned on by the power of the Holy Ghost, combined with what we go through in this world, we'll never receive Christ. There's a level of of trouble. There's a level of trial. There's a level of struggle. There's a level of, 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 of things that we have to go through in, in conjunction with that mechanism and that timing of God. And we wonder why some people can sit in church, we go to church all of our lives, or, or we just know people that say, I, I don't want to be saved because they have not went through enough. They have not went through enough in their lives, and that mechanism has not been turned on. And that, that's a whole nother message about that mechanism that needs to be turned on. And sometimes that mechanism gets turned off and desensitized because of sometimes what they, their environment that they grew up in, what they've been taught when they were children, all different types of things. But in this, in this instance, the call of God on their life was mighty. It was great. They were very confident in what God called them to be. Amen. And so in the scriptures, and if you read in the scriptures, it says that Peter, they started a ministry together. Amen. They knew. And one thing I love about the call of God on our life, when he calls us, amen, he does one thing. He calls us. That means he calls us. And, 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 and he, when he calls us, he, he uh, announces who we are in him. He announces to us like he did them. He commissioned them to go out and he calls us. He says, thou art a prophet. So you shouldn't have no doubt when he call you who I am. But because of other people and the the, the negative uh, connotations and the negative things that they've said over us, words spoken over us causes us to doubt the call of God on our lives. And I'm not talking about what I heard. I'm talking about what I know. I grew up in, I, I was in a church all my life. Pastor Walker can attest. I was in the church all my life. I was working in the ministry, doing everything. Knew the call of God on my life. But there were so many negative things spoken in the background. That when it was time to come forth, I I hesitated and I said, no. I don't want to do that. And it was because I could hear what was spoken in the atmosphere. But one thing I love about Peter and John, they didn't care about what had been said about them. They still stepped out in confidence and did what God told them to do. And then after he called them, he, qu- he equips us. And when he equips us, he takes us through. There's no way I can, can, it's like being in the army. There's no way I can train you or equip you to do what you, to, to, to fight in the war if I don't first take you through training. And training hurts. Training beats you down. Yes, it takes a sacrifice and a discipline. And he does that and he beats us and he trains us. And it doesn't feel good. It's uncomfortable. But he takes us through it because he needs to equip us. So when folks start beating us and battering us, we already used to it. It doesn't phase us. So he equips us. And the equipping doesn't happen overnight. Hear me. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a process. 
third thing he does, he sends us out. Scripture says that he commissioned them and told them to go. He said, I'll commission you and I send you out to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and in the other most parts of the earth. So he sent them out after he called them, after he equipped and trained them, then he sent them out. Second thing I want to talk about is partnerships. Hear me really good. Partnerships in this season matter. Partnerships in this season matter. Who you get connected to matters in this season, especially in a season of recovery. It matters who you connect to. Peter and John was going, they went through Pentecost together. They were filled with the Holy Spirit together. There was a rebirthing that happened to them together. And this brings me to the conclusion, y'all, that when a rebirthing or a new birthing takes place in our lives, you have to make sure that the relationships with people are with people who can handle the call. They handle, they can handle the call that's on your life. And let me tell you something. And I want to pause right there to say whenever there is a birthing, there's a new glory that comes. And folk connected to you will be silently jealous, silently envious. And here you are trying to recover, but they're so jealous of the glory. They're so jealous of the oil. That's why we have to be so careful of the partnerships in this season. People will be connected to you. They'll worship with you. They'll support you. They'll, they'll, they'll give you money. They'll sow into you. And all at the same time, they hate your guts. Wow. They will hate you and support you. Don't get it twisted. They will hate you and still support you. They will hate you and still give to you. They'll say they won't, but they will. They'll say they won't, but they will. And the people that's closest to you have the ability to push you further or draw you backwards. Let me tell you something about partnerships, and I shared this last week. Partnerships matter, and it's so important that we compartmentalize all friendships, all relationships. Anybody that's connected to you, you got to compartmentalize. When you say, Shauna, how do you compartmentalize the friendships? You take each one, and you evaluate the friendship. You evaluate it. And then after you come, I'm gonna put this one. I'm gonna put Walker over here, and I'm gonna put uh, a a Alexander right here, and I'm gonna put uh, Linda right here. I'm gonna put uh, Darren over here, and I'm gonna put Prophet over here. And I got all these friends, and I got them compartmentalized. And then I walk over there, and I'm gonna say, well, you know, this person. I'm gonna invite them to to my birthday party. I'll invite them to a dinner, but that's it. Then I look at, at Alexander, I might say, he got a little more access to me. So I'm gonna invite him not only to my party, not only to my dinner, but I can give him access and let him ride in my car. I can allow him to go visit family with me. We can hang out a little bit together. We can do ministry together. Then I look over here at Walker, and I say, well, I know Walker a little bit better. I can trust Walker a little bit better. So I'm going to invite Walker and them over to my house because they got a little more access. And then there's those people like, like Prophet Kruger. I'm going to invite him to my house, and he's going to come in. He's going to come in my living room. I'm going to fix him something to drink. We're going to have a good time. But that's the farthest he can go. Might let him use the bathroom. But then there's those people like Belinda, who I, I know without a shadow of a doubt, who it's been confirmed by the Holy Ghost that this is who I need to be connected with. Not only will I allow her access to the house, access to the bedroom, but I might say, Belinda, go in my bedroom. 
and bring me such and such because the relationships. We have to be ever so careful who was assigned to us in this season. Your, they got to understand the assignment and the call on your life. And when they understand the call and the assignment on your life, that's how you compartmentalize. That's how you compartmentalize. And here you can see Peter, you can see John, um, Peter and John were assigned to each other. And miracles, signs, and wonders were happening because they were assigned to each other. And Peter and John went, and the Bible even talks about them going to the temple of Jerusalem at the gate called Beautiful. And how the lame man was there. And the man, and they came and he said, you know, we don't have this and this and this, but such as we have. We give unto you and in the name of the Lord Jesus be thou made whole. If you can just take just from that little scriptures when you're connected to the right person and you're on your assignment and you both understand your assignment. Prophet. Miracles, signs and wonders will follow you. We wondering why church is stagnant. We wondering why ain't no, you know, ain't no signs, miracle signs and wonders. Nobody getting delivered. Nobody getting saved. You have to evaluate. Evaluate. Is there anybody in the camp that ain't supposed to be in the camp? Who in the camp that's not supposed to be in the camp? Somebody. We got to stop. Where you, who are you? We start evaluating. And compartmentalizing. Third thing I want to talk about is the suffering that we go through. The suffering brings about glory. It brings about oil on our lives. And here it said Peter and John after they experienced all of these things. Do you know when you experience a new season of your life? And a new birthing, and you begin to walk in what God called you to, you are, you are assigned to the right people. Don't you know demons are then attracted to you? And you find yourself like, Lord, I ended up here because of the anointing that's on your life and the oil that's produced. It's very attractive. Have you ever seen honey and, and you know, the honey sand around? So you see the bees attracted to it. And that's how it is with the oil that's on your life. And you have to be ever so careful who you allow in your circle, especially when you're going through this season of recovery. If you're expecting to get what God has, what you've been saying and asking God for, these are the, some of the steps that we have to take. Amen. Amen. And we have to learn also that, uh, that man that was seated, they said, you know, he didn't have no money. He was healed, and, and, the, and the, the council, the Sanhedrin, and all of them, they were upset. And I'm just trying to give you, y'all know the scriptures, what happened. They were mad. They were put in jail. And, and, and then uh, they began to pray. And they were uh, released from jail, and I'm almost done. But I want to talk about this last nugget, which is posture. The posture, and not just the physical posture that they had, but the mindset. The mindset of Peter and John. And it says it, and when I read it, I have to come to the conclusion that they were very prayerful. Very prayerful. And their posture was prayer. It is impossible for you to walk in miracle signs and wonders and not be prayerful. And a lot of times we are anointed and we, we, we can tear church up. I mean, we can really wreck a church. But when we look at our lives, posture, what posture are you in? Because we, we, we got gifts. Gifts come without repentance. And, and come on, the tongues that we speak in, come on, we can, you can practice that. You can, you can make them up, you can practice them, and they'll sound so good. And, and they have everybody in here jerking and, and, and going off with you. However, 
the posture of prayer will be so evident on your life, not because you can come tear up a church, but because lives are changed when you're done. So when I get up, if you, if, if you leave here and there's nothing you can take back and make applicable to your life, I failed you. Not that I came, I sung, I sound good. But did I have an effect on your life? Did I have an effect on your decision making? This next phase of your life, will you have a memory of something that I said to you, of how I ministered to you, your interaction with me? And so we have to be ever so careful that the posture that we are in, and what I love about Peter and John, and I'm almost done, y'all. We've been here, and it's, it's but what, 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 what I love about Peter and John, y'all, is when they were released, the posture that they had, what did the scripture say? They began to pray. But one of the things I noticed about the prayer that they were praying, that they began praying the problem. God, look what they did to us. Look what they did to me. They came up against your son. But somewhere along in the prayer, the posture changed, the mindset changed. And they went from praying the problem to praying to their God. They begin to pray, God, now I've, you know, I've told you what they've done to me, as if you didn't already know it. But I just want to remind you, now God, strong God. And that to lets me know that their posture before, and it's so important that before we go through things, while we're going through things, and after we go through things, that we remain in that same posture. A lot of times we have troubles, we have trials, we go through things, and we automatically get in that posture of prayer. We're seeking God, we're fasting, we're diligent with it diligently seeking him. And once he brings us out, we go from that posture of prayer into that just God, I thank you for it. I thank you. We're so excited. But we stop praying. We put prayer back. Oh, we got to praise. We're going to keep a praise. But we put, that, we put that prayer on the back burner until something else come along. And that prayer has to be our posture every day. Whether you bring me out or not, I'm going to still stay prayerful. And I'm so sorry that I'm a teacher. All right? I'm so sorry that I'm a teacher, but that's the anointing on my life. It's a preacher. Now, I do prophesy, but I am a teacher of the gospel. And I have you taking a book load of notes, and I try not to do that. But what I love about them, and I believe that in this season, God is getting ready to release some things to us. He's getting ready to release. It's a season of release. But in this season, partnerships are going to matter. And your posture is going to matter. And whether or not you accept the call on your life and work in that pur uh, in purpose, that purpose, that posture, that prayer, those partnerships, PPP, y'all, oh, PPP long. <laughs> but that posture, that prayer, amen, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the determining factor of that next season of release for you. It's just like giving your kids something. They've been asking you something for something for so long, and they've been just diligently cleaning the room, keeping things clean, doing the homework, making good grades. And then you release and you give it to them, and then immediately after you give it to them, the grades drop. They start acting up. Why? Because that's not a continual posture for them. They just wanted something. And God is getting tired of us coming to him, getting things, and once he releases it, we go right back. To where we were. And he's saying, I want a continual, stay in that continual posture of prayer. So that when I release, I ain't going to see no difference in your walk. I ain't going to see no difference in your behaviors. Because what you do has become you. This is who you are. Prayer is who you are. P uh, uh, evaluating and compartmentalizing friendships, discerning friendships and partnerships. That's who you are. You do it without even thinking about it. I know I do. I've gotten to the place where we, sometimes we give people access to us that should not have access to us. And it's no hard feelings. There are people who are just as anointed as we are. 
just as called as we are. They are chosen by God like we are. They just are not assigned to us. And we have to be okay with that. I have family members. I have people in my life that are bad to the bone. But in this season of my life, we're not connected. It's not because we don't love each other. We're just not the assignment on our lives at this moment. Now, I don't know what God's going to do later. He may bring us back. But in this season, you have to be okay with disconnections. And I, I, in the scriptures, a lot of times you see where there is deconstruction and there's a tearing down and a pulling away and a plucking and a rooting up. But anytime you see that in the scriptures, you have to know that not many, not long after that, there's going to be a replanting. There's going to be a rebirthing. God never tears us down with, without the intention of rebuilding. And when he rebuilds, he rebuilds better than he did before. And so I admonish every one of us. Accept the call. Walk in it with confidence. And I know, you know a bunch of preachers in here, so I don't have to tell y'all that. But one thing as a pastor and as a preacher that I do want to say to you, your partnerships in this next season is going to matter. It's going to matter. It's going to matter. I had a whole message I was prepared to preach. And I was telling event, uh, Prophet uh, Small, I said, you know what, how? I said, I had a whole message. I had done got it together, and I was ready. And he said, no. He said, you go back and revisit this, because there's somebody here that's going to be there that's in this season that they're recovering everything that they lost. And they need to know that the call on, of God on their life is sure. Ain't no doubt about it. It's undeniable. But the partnerships and the posture that they take going forward is detrimental to the next season of release. You will not receive what God has for you if you don't evaluate the partnerships. And I know the person I'm talking to. Hear me and you're receiving this. And a lot of times we, we go through things. And we feel like we are healed. I know I, I did. I'm still going through recovery. There are still triggers and things. I was triggered today. But my response was different because I'm confident in the call on my life. When years ago I would not and I would have reacted differently. So God is, 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 is uh, wanting us to deal with What's left in us that's getting triggered? You, you, you're going through the healing, and you're coming out, and you're looking good. You're sounding good. Everything seems to be getting back in order, ready to love again. But there's still some triggers that lets us know that there's a place that's not yet healed. Total recovery. He said total recovery. Not just your finances. Not, not just <laughs> what you lost. He said, but I want to deal with the inside. He said, I, don't, I, don't want, I ain't talking about the stuff that look good to people. I'm talking about the stuff people can't see. That's what I want to deal with. When you go home at night and we done put this big front out for everybody else, but when we get home and lay in the bed, we start to think about it in the hurt, and it's all still there. But I'm healing. I'm healing. I look good to everybody. Everybody's like, oh, she done went on with her life. But sometimes I lay in that bed, and there's still a place. And God says, see there? You ain't totally recovered. And so I want to say to you, and it doesn't happen overnight. It's possible that it could, but it more than often will not happen overnight. 
It takes time. Don't rush the process. Don't rush the healing. Don't rush the recovery. It's like going in the hospital, having surgery. And when you go through that surgery, they put you in that recovery room. And they got the nurses in there watching you. But they got a certain amount of time that you should be able to leave recovery. But in the spirit realm, the only person that's keeping the clock is God. You and God and your recovery is determined by you accepting the call and being confident and walking in it, partnering with the right people, staying in a posture of prayer, and allowing God to be God. And I promise you, everything that you've been praying for, everything that you've been seeking God for, you will see it manifest. And you will receive everything that you've been saying that you've wanted. Like that child, everything they wanted, that parent gave it to them. When the parents saw the pressing, the parents saw the obedience, the parents saw the resilience, they saw everything and they rewards based on that. And then that child goes back and that parent say, he's still, <sighs> we don't wanna make God like our parents and say, I brought you out, I healed you, I did all of this and you went back. You went right back to that same posture that you were in that tore you up. You went right back to that same place that tore you up. And a lot of times, I'm gonna say this, because I, I ask God all the time, I say, God, you connected me, and I'm friends with a lot of pastors. Y'all wouldn't even believe the pastors that call me, inbox me, just to, just to hear what I got to say. And for so many years, I didn't even realize the call of God on my life. My uncle, uh, Apostle Nathaniel Curtis, the father of all of them, he would come to my house. Linda know he go everybody, mostly everybody house. But what was so strange about his visit to my house, he would park his truck in front of the house. And the children say, Mama, back then they called him Bishop. They say, Bishop is outside. And I go to the truck. He cut the truck off. He take a deep breath and he say, what do you see? And I would tell him what I saw and what I see. And he would come back later and he say, you said it. You ready to preach? I said, no, I won't preach. I just keep coming by the house. Just keep on coming by the house. But you have to get to that place that you are sure about that call on your life. And no matter who supports, I was looking around this room tonight and I was saying this room should have been filled. Maybe they waiting on tomorrow night. I don't know. But it should have been filled. All the lives that you have impacted, all the lives that you have touched, impartations that you have given, should have been more people here. But you can't allow that to break you. Can't allow that to hinder you. So you gotta keep pressing, gotta keep, keep going, despite what you see, despite what you see. And I wanted to just share, and I said, Lord, now I had a longer message and I had a bunch of stuff I wanted to talk about, but you said talk about those three points tonight. And I, uh, I just hope that uh, you were blessed by, or you being blessed by this word, amen, that I'm seeing. Your partnerships are going to matter in this next season. It's going to matter in this next season. And I'm, I'm telling you, like Peter and, and, and John, when they were faced with the things that they were faced with, everything about them intensified. When they were going back and forth, arguing with the, with, the, with the council, council didn't even know what to do with them. 
Like, we going to, should we put them back in jail? We don't want y'all talking about Jesus no more, you know? And so you know at that point, when you get to the point, you don't mind going back to jail. You don't mind if they, what they're going to do to you. It doesn't matter anymore. I'm going to, I'm going to walk this walk. And that's where they were. And they saw the hand of God move, shake the room. And they begin to pray, and they begin to plead. And I believe that God was more pleased with the posture of prayer that they took when they release, were released than all the things that they had done prior. And why do I say that? Back to what I, the example I gave you of a parent that says, my child did all this, and once I blessed them, they went back versus I did all this, and now I bless them, and now my child is still doing it. They're continuing to do what I've asked them to do. They're continuing to keep that room clean. What, what would make you happier? If that child did all of that, you bless them, and then they go back? Or would you be more proud of that child if they did everything you told them to, you bless them, and then they intensify the obedience? And that's what God is saying. He said, I want, it inten- I want your in- obedience to me to be intensified, your prayer life to be intensified. The programs are good. The conferences are good. And I was talking about this to one of my friends the other day. It's a shame we have a whole prayer conference. We have a prayer conference. We, we, we preach on prayer. We, 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 we talk on prayer, have classes on prayer, but there's no time set aside for prayer. Where, 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 where's the prayer? We're doing all this talking. Come on, let's gather together and pray. We're better together. And when we get together and all in one accord, like they did in that upper room, and people were filled with the Holy Ghost and begin to speak with other tongues, come on. We do all that, putting on. I don't go to a conference, you know, especially, and I ain't nothing against people, you know, what they do, they do what they do, you know? They anointed, they call, just like me, just like us. But I ain't putting on all that stuff, going in there, teaching about this and teaching about that, and then we don't even have an hour of prayer set aside. No, no time set aside for a prayer. But we want to teach you how to. I want to teach you how to pray, but we ain't gonna pray in here. Not we got because we got the same. We got we got the preacher coming tonight, and they gonna bring the word. So we ain't got time for prayer. But I'm gonna teach. So when you go home in your closet, you get in your prayer closet and you pray, or you go back and let your pastor hand do do all of that. And God is getting tired of us. We we putting on the show. We got everything going. We got it all together. But he's calling for true worshipers, true, true worshipers. That when I worship God, there's, it's evident on, on my life that I'm not just doing this here. I'm doing it at the house. And this is a continual for me. This is an everyday uh, agenda for me. This is on the agenda. Every day I'm praying. Every day I'm, I'm seeking God. And when I open my mouth and I begin to speak, you're going to know that I've been with God. In this season, God said, I'm getting ready. I was, I was praying to God. I said, God, you know, I, I went through what I went through. But I said, Lord, I don't want to live all, all the rest of my life without a husband. I don't live the rest of my life without a husband. I, and I know what Melissa probably laugh about this. And I said, God, I don't, I don't want to live the rest of my life without a husband. I want to be married. Seemed like every man I get, he going on and married the woman right after me. So something going on. I don't know what it, what's going on. Like I'm preparing them for marriage. Like I can put them in, ma- like I'm the marriage counselor or something. So they, they go get married right after me. But I was praying. I said, God, I don't want to live the rest of my life not married. Because when I did get married, I got married late in my life. So I don't want to spend the rest. So hurry up and hurry up, you know, and send, <laughs> send somebody. He began to t- talk to me. 
And he said, I want my intimacy first. He said, I want intimacy with you first. He said, I want to lay with you first. He said, you get in there with me. Give me some intimate time with you. And when you walk out them doors, everybody going to know who your man is. He said, because when you begin to open your mouth, people are going to know you've been with me. They will know you've been with me. And when they know that you've been with me, then you're ready. And I say, well, okay, God, I guess we're going to go and get, get in the, do the thing. And that just lets me know that that level of prayer and intimacy with him, I had to intensify it. I had to increase the, 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 the regimen. The, you know how you have a workout regimen? You got to have a prayer regimen. So that I pray according to that regimen. And as I keep praying, and I'm building resilience, and everything that's on me, the weight starts to fall off. And everything that's on me that shouldn't be starts to detach itself. And now I'm physically fit, spiritually fit for his use. And he said, and then at that time, you read? So I guess I, I wasn't ready. I thought I was, but I guess I wasn't ready. But I said, God, you know, in this next season, I'm going to give you praise. He said, I'm going to start creating places in the marketplace, places in the, in the schools, places uh, uh, the, in the hospital, wherever, for you to show people that you've been with God. You're going to be walking in the store, and there's going to be a moment created for you to show them who your God is. You're going to begin to witness. You're going to be able to speak. Even may even have to lay hands on a sick person and they recover for them to know that you've been with God. And I just love God tonight. I love him. I love teaching his word. Y'all, I'm so sorry that I'm not a hooper and I'm not a hollerer. Maybe one day I'll get them. But I love teaching because you can dance all night, you can shout all night, you can scream and holler all night and fill this room and everybody leave and go back the same way. Nobody changed, nobody delivered, nobody saved. But I can't, you know, I can't holler now. I can do, I pretty much, you know, I'm a Curtis, so I can, I can probably pull it together. Y'all know I can't. Now, when I preside a service, I put it down. But it's, I don't know. I told God, I said, God, I don't know what it is that when I'm presiding a service, I'm preaching. But when I preach, I'm teaching. But it's the anointing of God on my life to declare his word with precision and clarity so that his people will understand who he is and not just who he is but who he is in their lives. Amen. So I thank you all. I thank you, Prophet. I love you so much. I love you so much. I came all the way from Charlotte. All the way from Charlotte. And they kept calling me, Prophetess, what's your honorarium? I said, he's my friend. Give me some gas money. If you want him. I don't have to. God makes provision for me. He makes provision. And it's his responsibility to make provision, not mine. You call me to do something, you said it shall be done. I should, you call a conference, or, or you said put together a, whatever prayer breakfast. I was telling them this morning at a prayer breakfast. A woman of God was struggling with her prayer breakfast financially. Didn't know if she was going to be able to have it. And the day the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and told, and told me, gave me a word for her. And I told her, I said, the provision is not your responsibility. You have to understand, even in your ministries, hear me well, pastors. What you need, the money you need, everything you need is not your responsibility. It's God's responsibility to make it happen for you. And it's your responsibility to be obedient. The only thing he requires to receive from him is your faith. 
Faith is the currency of heaven. Just like your money, the currency on this earth, faith is the currency in heaven. You want to make transactions in the heavens? You got to have faith. You got to have faith. That's the exchange. Here we give you money, you give me product. In heaven, I give you faith, you give me release. That's what he's saying tonight. Amen. And I was sitting there. And I told my apostle, I do thank God for him. Amen. We are in conference in Macon, Georgia tonight. But he told me, he said, don't cancel. He said, go. He said, go. Because what you have to say. It's going to encourage. And somebody needs to hear it. Tell the man of God I said, hey. And I was sitting there and I said, looking around the room. And God reminded me on Sunday. I was speaking the word of the Lord on Sunday. Few in number. And when the service was over, my pastor came and told me. He said, the very word you spoke tonight, me and my wife has been discussing. It's been on our prayer list. It's been something that I've been dealing with. He said, and I want you to know you drove all the way down here for me. You, the word was for me. And I was talking and I was preparing to come here. He called me Tuesday. He said, we were talking on the phone and he gave me permission to come not to cancel. God's like, Pastor, I'm so sorry. I was supposed to do it on Friday, and I was going to drive on up to conference afterwards, but they changed it to Saturday, and that's my friend. He said, you still go and do it, and you go and you minister. But what he, was, what he said to me, he said, the Lord said, deliver the same word you gave me to the house on Saturday. And so my little cute little message that I had put together went out the window. And in this season, we have to be ever so careful that we're only speaking what thus saith the Lord because lives are at stake. People are recovering from hits. They're getting hit going and coming. And I'm not just talking about the pews. I'm talking about in the pulpit. That's where the biggest hit is. Because you know if I, can, if I can get them and knock them out, I, I got the rest of them. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move on the phone. And I received, I said, God, whatever you say, I'll do. I'll reteach it. I didn't even really get into everything. But those three points, and I want to say this tonight, your recovery, total recovery, will depend on you walking in what God called you confidently, getting these partnerships and friendships in order. Anything that's going to cause you to walk in error, going to cause you to walk in sin cut it the song says you got to cut it get in that posture stay there and you will see what you've been saying you will see what you have been saying and I know tonight Man of God, that word was for you. You're going through a season of recovery, Pastor Alexander. It's detrimental. Evaluate. Compartmentalize. Cut. Sabotage if you have to. Everybody's watching. Everybody's watching and they're waiting. 
but I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, stay in my face. Because this next season of your life is going to be great. Greater than it's ever been. What you went through was designed to stop the progression stop you from getting to this place that you're getting ready to enter and I hear the spirit of the Lord say your mother has been praying for you and it's because of her prayers that you went through this season come on the lies the gossip saying you were perfect but one thing we can all say we ain't been perfect but we sure been faithful and the, because of your faithfulness to God and saying I won't give up no matter what God say I'm gonna take you through this season of recovery and on the other side of this, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. He said, and what I'm getting ready to do in you and through you. And matter of fact, I hear the spirit of the Lord say, it's getting ready to expand. And I see so many people coming because they're getting ready to see not, not Derek Alexander, not Prophet Alexander, but they're getting ready to witness a rebirthing. And the glory on your life is going to be revealed, intensified. And you will be able to walk in what God called you confidently, regardless of what you went through, regardless of what they said, regardless of what people have done. It's, unden it's an undeniable anointing on your life. And the word of the Lord for you tonight, stay in my presence. Cut who you got to cut this season of recovery you're going to receive total restoration and there's going to be a reformation that takes place and you're going to see the people the influx of souls that are getting ready to come because they know what you went through but they see you on the other side of it That is the word of the Lord concerning you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Amen. Put your hands together. God's, God's word is true, and we don't have to add or subtract or do anything to it. It does and it accomplishes what it's sent to accomplish when it's from God. And tonight I just want to say I love you. And Pastor Walker, I want to I, I wanna say this and I wish your wife was here. And I'll say this. The, you went through your recovery. Man, you know I witnessed some of it. And you were on the other side of the recovery. But you still have not witnessed in its fullness what God's getting ready to do. But because of your faithfulness and what God loves so much about you is although the words were spoken, although the things you stay connected to your spouse, and you said, although I messed up, this time, <laughs> and because of your faithfulness, not just to her, 
but to God and proving to God that you meant what you said. God's getting ready to do something. And I'm not talking about just with your church, but he's getting ready to do something with your wife. I saw her. And I wish she was here, but I saw her some couple years ago. And we were in Longhorn, and I don't know if you remember that day. Getting ready to go, it was a Sunday afternoon. And we were in Longhorn. I think I saw you a couple times in Longhorn. Me and Prophet was together one time we saw you. And um, I have a great memory, elephant memory. But uh, we saw you, and we were all waiting on a seat. And your seat became available before ours. And you walked around the corner. You took legend with you. And she and I were talking. And the Spirit of the Lord had me minister to her. And I told her some things. And I saw it manifest. I told her. I said, some doors getting ready to open. You're going to be preaching. You know, all that good stuff. But I hear the Lord say, she have not graced. She, she, she haven't even touched the surface of where God and it, it and it's not so much because that's what she really want to do it's not really what she want to do but because other people need to see it and there's so many other lives connected to her she's going to have to walk in it and she's getting to the place now that she's ready to, she's getting ready to walk in that thing but i hear the spirit of the lord say Tell her to get on a prayer regimen. Tell her if there is not an intercessory team, and I don't know if you have one at your ministry, but if you don't, tell her to start it. Because through the intercession, God's going to burst some things in her first. And then he's going to burst some things in the ministry. And you're going to see the people in the ministry start to... And that's when the doors are going to really open. That's when her ministry is really going to take off. But it's not going to take off till she get that prayer regimen. There's a prayer. God is calling her into an intimate place with her. And you, some nights you might have to say, Bae, go pray. Get out of bed and go pray. And you may have to even coach her because she's not from that culture. I, you know, I know her. She's not from that culture. We all come from Newberry, in the pro, you know, around Newberry parts. And so she wasn't raised, even though I was raised in the church because of my grandmother would come get me and take me to church. But, but I hear the spirit of the Lord say, put her on a, tell her, to, I tell her the Lord say, get on a prayer regimen. Set a schedule where she prays. She not just prays with you, but she prays alone. Because that's what's going to really build her. Because sometimes we, we're connected to spouses who are, you know, powerful. They've been in this thing for a long time. We kind of ride off of their anointing. But the Lord says, I want to give it to her own anointing. I want to put it in her. That it'll be evident that it's not you, but it's God. And she's going to walk in it. And lives are going to get saved through her. I even see her family. When she really take off, they're going to come because they want to see Tamisha. Her schoolmates, they're going to come. They want to see Tamisha. Now, I know the Tamisha that married the preacher, but I don't know this Tamisha. And the Lord said, when she get on that prayer regimen, he's going to really, really empower her. Amen. And that's the word of the Lord for her. Amen. I love you, Linda. Y'all, I'm so excited because my cousin came through. Amen. She wrote me and I, she was telling me some things concerning her health. And I said, girl, we got this. And I'm sure some of you were praying with her. And today she's totally healed and recovered. And she's back in the church and singing praises, leading praise worship, all that good stuff. Amen. She's preaching and teaching, and I love her. I love her, but your mom, I gave you a word for your mom a long time ago, and I'm not sure if she's doing it, is she? Amen. But that, Amen. Good, good. That's good news. That's good news. Amen. Prophet, I love you. Going to dinner, I hope. Amen. Pastor Darwin, I love you so much. And I love you so much. I don't have no word for you, though. But I love you. I love you. Partnership. 
partnership. Love y'all so much, and I hope that you were blessed. I hope that you received something of the Lord on tonight that you can take back with you and apply it to your lives. Walk that walk, talk that talk like you've never done it before and see the hand of God and everything that you've been saying, you will see it manifest. Amen. Who's next? All right, here we go. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, Prophetess Curtis, for the word. I love my cousin, y'all. <laughs> I was ready to hear that word. This appreciation is not for me, but that word was for me, too. It was for all of us. And we we're so grateful for that word. We are getting... But we are ready to lift up our offering for tonight. So, what I want y'all to do is to give. This is a great man of God. He deserves what we give and so much more. But tonight... We want to give him more than just words. We want to give him some money. Praise Jesus. So, I'm asking everyone if they can, if you can give 20, 25, Fifty, whatever the Lord lays on your heart to give to him. And we can go ahead and get started with the offering. And we have the ways to give tonight. I'm sorry, forgive me, y'all. Cash App, we have it's dollar sign Dr. Kruger. If you're giving by the Cash App, it's dollar sign Dr. Kruger. If you're going to give by PayPal, it's at Dr. Kruger. Okay. If you're giving on this side, you can come on up. I also have a swiper up here also that I can do cards.
Is everyone given? Thank y'all very much. We're going to go ahead and bless the offering. Lord, we thank you for those that have given to the man of God who is worthy of all this and more, God. We thank you for everyone that is here. Bless the ones that gave. Bless the ones that didn't have to give but had the heart and the desire to give. We just thank you because you are the God of more. And we give your name all glory and praise because you're worthy, God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, can we clap our hands? Amen. For what has taken place in this service tonight. Amen. It don't take a lot of people to celebrate. Amen. You just need the right people. Amen. And I have been blessed on tonight. Amen. So we get ready. Amen. To I don't have my program. The woman God got caught up and took my program. Amen. Praise the Lord. What do we have? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have special presentations coming. Amen. And followed by closing remarks and then our benediction by Pastor Brittany Heaven. Amen. They're coming in their order. Because I can't read. Amen. Closing remarks. Dr. Krug, you was ready. I don't know why y'all well, everybody standing. Welcome to Honoree. Amen. As he comes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Can you just praise the Lord for just a second? Hallelujah. God, you're wonderful. You're worthy to be praised, to be lifted, to be glorified. Hallelujah. I thank you for what you have done in this place today. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, thank you so much for coming and celebrating with me. Thank God for every person that was on program that traveled near and far. Hallelujah. I am so honored that you are here. Praise God. And, you know, one thing about it is, woman of God, I, I had already told myself, I say, regardless of who shows up tonight, I'm still coming to have a good time. I don't care if it was five people. I was going to have a good time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But God is good. I thank God for the opportunity to be able to celebrate life and just celebrate the things that God has done because I was just in the same boat. I did not want to preach. I didn't want to do nothing but sing and prophesy, and I was good. You know, just leave me alone. But then when God keep calling you and calling you and calling you, you know, and then it's just like finally, you know, you had that peace about it, and it's just like, okay. And when I tell people, you know, when it's time, God will give me a peace about it, and he did at the right time. And then sure after that, then they talk about, oh, you going to pastor? I'm like, you cussing now. Don't, don't, don't do that. Because, <laughs> uh-uh, thank you, Jesus. It's too much that come along with that. And so, and I'm just, you know, praise God. But I've accepted it. So when, at the right time, it'll, it's going to happen. Amen. So in the meantime, I'm going to keep working. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But I thank God again. Thank you, everybody. Everybody. Just give yourselves a hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I am I am truly honored, truly honored. And it's so amazing because, Pastor, you know, I came out the Baptist church. So, you know, praise God. <laughs> That's what I grew up in. And then it was so amazing that God took me through different backgrounds and allowed me to fellowship with different ministries to get a touch of each type of uh, denomination and so and it's just like you never know what God is going to do through that you know and then when he puts you in the midst of situations that you have to see it and it starts to you'll understand it better by and by it starts to make more sense and so I just thank God for all of the experiences all of the trials there are some situations and things that I've been through in my life and even in the church and it's just a lot of hurt and damage and things of that nature and I told myself I said you know what when God told me I had to let you go through it for your now, I can appreciate it. And I say, you know what? It didn't make sense then when I would say, God, where are you? I understand. I know you got to see what these people are doing to me. You got to see what's happening. You know, and it's, it's, it feel like you're not doing anything. And it, it just felt like I, I literally told God, I feel like I'm in a horror movie and I, I have no escape. And so in the midst of that, because I'm not a person that I just run because somebody hurt my feelings and I just get up and leave the church. I don't do that. I'm led by God. And so I sat and I sat and I sat. And in the midst of all of that, in the midst of being embarrassed, in the midst of all types of things that happened to me, you know, I just, I stayed still. And I didn't move. I didn't do anything until God say, okay. And so in the midst of all of that, you know, it, it didn't make any sense to me then, but it makes sense now. And I tell you, God, I'm glad you let me go through it. I'm glad you let me experience the things that I experienced. And I don't, I, I don't, want, it, I, I don't want it to be taken away from me. I don't want those experiences taken away. I just don't want to go through it again. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm good. I got the lesson. I don't want it, I don't want it no more. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be alive grateful to be alive my birthday next week praise the lord thank you jesus hallelujah i'll be 36 say i ain't shame of my age praise god hallelujah god is still preserving me amen thank you jesus and even when i get 50 i'm gonna still be young praise god hallelujah hallelujah but i thank god i don't know who's supposed to be doing the benediction but praise god but i'm getting ready to give it back over to her uh, so that she can close us out on tonight. But again, thank you all so much for taking your time to come in and celebrate with me. Thank you, Pastor Darwin. Thank you, uh, Pastor Alexander. Thank you, Prophetess Shonda. Thank you, Pastor Lionel. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, woman of God, for coming and celebrating with me. Hallelujah. I thank God for my mom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But let's stand to our feet as we get ready to leave this place on today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. And we're standing. Father, we thank you for 
the word, Father, that's been spoken on tonight. Father, we thank you for every song that's been sung. Father, we thank you for every reading of the scriptures. God, everything that has taken place on tonight, Father, we thank you, God, for your people and their obedience, Father, and their yes to you tonight, Father. We thank you, God, for the honor. Father, continue to bless him. Continue to strengthen him for the journey, Father. And we thank you for each and every one of these individuals, Father. And as we leave this place and go on our separate ways, Father, let no accidents or happenstance or anything happen to us, Father, but allow us to arrive at our destination safely, Father. And then when we go to sleep, we get sweet rest, Father. Deal with us, God, concerning the word that has been spoken, Father, that we will take that world and seal it, Father, and apply it to our lives, Father, that you get the glory. And God, we thank you tonight for being who you are in our in our lives father in us and through us father and we give you glory we give you honor and we give you praise and until the next time we meet god you be blessed amen